That's it. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Anyways, this is Howie. But uh, let's get into it. So I'm sorry I didn't upload the second part of the video to the tournament. For the second and third day of the tournament, it was very long and drawn out and I couldn't get the right footage for a video. I know I could have posted pretty much anything, but there wasn't much I could have done uh, wise with the footage I had. Um, I spent too much time filming, you know, pretty much nothing. <laughs> You know, just me casting a line out there and getting absolutely no bites. I ended up coming in fifth place. Uh, it does suck that I couldn't get a better position in it. If I could have done anything differently, I probably wouldn't have focused on my secret spot that I have for bass uh, more than any other spot. I should have spent more time uh, trying other spots out I think I think it would have helped me out a lot and instead of just hoping this one spot would help me I should have taken the kayak out which I think would have helped me out tremendously uh, get into far places that you know big bass are hiding but you know it's done and over with there's nothing we can do about it now I did end up beating my dad, so, you know, I did win, you know, the little bit that we had. Uh, I do have some updates and announcements if Howie can, you know, find a comfortable spot to sit or lay. So this season, I plan on focusing on a wide range of fishing, um, you know, comes to micro fishing, the ultra light. You know, I want to dabble in a little bit of everything, you know, just to broaden the range of content that I have out there. Catching bass and snakeheads and all that good stuff is fun. It's actually absolutely fun, but it's the same old, same old. And I don't want to be one of those cre content creators, you know, where there's not a variety of things to watch. I'm also about to go over a little review of something I purchased uh, just to give you guys a good idea of like, you know, what you think about it. I'm fairly happy with it. I already opened up the package, so I do apologize about that. It's only because I knew what was in it already, besides like the little bit of information they give you. Um, but other than that, I'm going to go over a new fishing reel that I got. Uh, I have not used it yet, so I can't give you much information about it. And then I can tell you a little more of what I have planned. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll have some content coming out soon. All right. So one of the things I bought was an Orvis Clearwater fly reel. This is in seven to eight weight, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think it's a seven to eight. I already opened it up. I got it spooled up. I forget what type, uh, what brand at least, uh, line is on it. I do know that it is an eight weight line with that's floating. So I heard some decent things about these reels. I know it's not the greatest reel. Um, but I do know that it is good for starters and you know, that's what I am. I'm, I've never fly fished before in my life. I do want to take it very serious. So I had them spooled up at Cabela's. They got, um, like I think a 20 pound, um, white black backing on it. So I know it's going to do really well. When it comes to using it for bass, you know, possibly snakeheads, and maybe, you know, some salmon and steelhead in the future. But so far, you know, just feeling this reel, it feels like it's made extremely well. 
you know I've learned I've been doing a lot of research on it and I'm extremely happy with you know this being my first one so if you're interested in getting into fly fishing I do think that um, the Clearwater series of Orvis is a good start now when it comes to what you want to target maybe do a little research I can only give you what I know from the research and you know an eight weight for trout is a bit overkill I think the heaviest you might want to go is from like five to six that's for like you know decent size trout in larger bodies of water do some research I I can't, you know, I can't promise that I'm correct on everything I say about fly fishing because, you know, I'm new to it. But yeah, this this is definitely a good starter reel. Uh, if you want to buy it, I think it retails at $96, $95, something like that. Something in that ballpark. It's definitely right under $100. Um, but I think the... The rod for it is around 235 in that area. So you will end up spending over $300 to get the full outfit. But you don't have, have to get uh, the same rod and reel. I know Cabela's has a rod right now that has a lifetime guarantee on it. And it costs about... 170 I'm not I'm not I, I totally forget the the make of it but it's definitely a good one I was told for starting out so I would give it a try but yeah this is uh this is one of the things we're going to be doing and I'm very excited I would like to try to you know get a snake head on it uh because I feel like that would be really fun so all right i'm gonna put this away and i'm gonna show you some other stuff and you know we'll we'll talk again after okay so i bought a cheap and i mean super cheap uh fly outfit uh and this is some of the flies that came with it which i'm not 100 percent sure what these are i'm a, i'm just gonna you know spitball and say this is some type of dry fly i'm not 100 sure if that's correct uh this i would say is like a poorly made uh nymph of some sort you know uh, i'm gonna say this is probably maybe a wooly bugger i want to say this is uh, um, uh, some like elk hair caddis I think they called it and then obviously a little popper which you know I have experience with poppers when it comes to bass fishing I'm not sure what this little red thread here is for um, I didn't really look it up because it was just like a really cheap outfit and I got all this stuff with it as well I'm um, sure if you know fly fishing, you probably know what I got. Um, I only got it just to test out if I would enjoy the action and the motion of it. Um, and possibly do some challenges with it since it's, you know, super cheap and uh, it's really not going to break the bank if something happens to it. All right, I bought these from Dick Sporting Goods. As you can see, it has a wide range of flies in it. Since I'm gonna try fly fishing, I figured having this, having like a good amount of, you know, flies would help me out tremendously. I think a decent amount of these would probably do good with trout. Um, not 100% sure, obviously, because I've never fly fished and my knowledge for it is extremely uh, low. 
but it says trout at the top, so I'm assuming it should be at least decent for trout. Uh, I think I picked this up for about, I don't know, 15 bucks maybe. Um, but, you know, they do look a lot better made than the ones I just showed, so... I do expect some decent amount of uh, action with at least a few of these. So I have some strike indicators here. Um, I didn't even know what a strike indicator was uh, until I heard about it in a video. And I looked it up and to me it just looks like a bobber. So I'm assuming, you know, that's what a bobber is. It's just, you know, a strike indicator. Might use these. I think they probably will be fairly vital to, you know, some of the flies I use, maybe like the nymphs, because I think uh, they might sink a little bit and I don't want to lose flies since they seem like they're a lot easier to lose than, you know, some of the other stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll be trying some of these out as well. And I got some panfish poppers so they look fairly decent and i think this might be good for um, bass as well i haven't opened them up yet so i haven't really even checked out you know how sturdy the hooks are and all that other stuff but i don't know maybe a trout decent sized trout will go over to this small ones and i'm pretty sure won't even look twice at it And I got some poppers. I think this is going to be great for, you know, spawn, spawning bass. It's definitely going to be one of the go-tos when I try the fly rod out. Looks nice. Seems like it's made pretty well. Looks pretty sturdy. Looks sharp as heck. And I also got it in another color here. So I think these are going to do really well. You know, and we'll just stay tuned and we'll see how these do eventually. I also got this big sucker right here. I got this because it just looks so obnoxious. I just had to get it. The guy told me this goes on, you know, a fly rod. Just you need the right size fly rod apparently for it. Um, it looks really fun though. I'm hoping during, you know, when it, when the fish start to bed down, this is going to be key, uh, for them because they might think a snake's coming in to, you know, eat something. I'm not sure, but it does look really fun. It's obviously a top water since it's made out of this like foam. Okay, I also ended up buying the fly crate, which, you know, you can get a number of things out of. As you can see, there's, you can do like a mix and match and stuff and it'll give you a $30 credit and you can pick out what you want. This gives you a good idea of type, types of flies for, you know, the types of species. So yeah, it has this, it talks a little bit about the, the business and you know gives you a little bit of information about it which is pretty cool you know always gotta like it when you buy something and they send you like a thank you card i think that's very thoughtful and of course with any you know you know fly box or you know tackle box i've ever gotten they always give you a sticker it's always a sticker which you know I ain't mad at it. It looks pretty cool. It's a nice little sticker of a trout. I'm gonna go with, I don't know, maybe a cutthroat. I don't know. I've never even fished for a cutthroat, so I couldn't even tell you. I only say cutthroat because of this red area. But who knows? If I'm wrong, just tell me in the comments. It is a nice sticker though. I'm gonna find somewhere to put that. I ended up getting the mix uh, box, which it didn't even really come in a box. It just came in like a brown, you know, postage bag. 
So I'll show you some of the stuff I got. I did the mix because I didn't just want one uh, type of flies for um, trout or bass. I wanted a wide variety. I will do a video in the future on, on what they give you for, you know, trout uh, and one for the bass one. I do want to try out, I think it's called post fly, which they do something similar. I think it costs a little more, but it's not that bad. This was, I think they charge like 20 bucks to get one of these. All right, but well, let's start with this first one here. So this is the fish skull brown, some type of like, I guess like sw swimming fly, a little weight on it. Got some type of fur, looks really cool. I think this is gonna do really good when it comes to, you know, bass fishing. And I got this little mouse one right here, which I know is gonna do really well for bass fishing. Uh, it's called rabbit fur mouse. And it's got a size two hook on it. Looks really cool, feels really nice. I think it's gonna do really well. Okay, so I have this little minnow swimmer, I think it's called. Well, it's called Lunchable. Uh, I don't think this is considered a clouser, even though uh, it does kind of resemble one slightly, uh, but I think clousers have less uh, fur on them. I think it swims like this because that's the way this uh, hide shows. It's down. So I think it's going to swim like this with the hook up. I don't know. I guess I'll figure it out. Uh, now I have this as well. This is called Sex Dungeon. I know. It's a good, real good name, man. It? It's got two hooks on it right here and right here. Uh, and I can see from what it looks like, it's gonna be a really good one. This right here is called Muddler Minnow. This looks, I think, really good. I think it's made really well. I don't think this is considered a dry fly. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's called Mother Minnow, so I'm assuming this is going to sit under water. Feels Definitely feels like it's got some weight, so I don't see it sitting on top of the water. Alright, so this is a little nymph, I'm pretty sure. It's called J. Woods Prime Mover Brown color. Uh, and I think this is going to do really well when it comes to uh, trout and maybe panfish. So I have this little green beetle nymph right here. Uh, it's called Beaded Scud in an olive co color, which, you know, I guess you get olive out of that. It looks more like a, like a grassy green with a, a bit of metallic on it. And then this, is the smallest one I got. It's a size 18. You can probably hardly see it. Look how small that hook is. That thing is tiny. And I got it because I think it, it would do really well with pan fishing. I got a little spot where I think uh, I can use this. I'm gonna have to be careful though because it looks like I might lose it. And it's a Rainbow Warrior Midge in pearl color. Okay, now for this. Here's a little beetle fly. We got a lot of beetles around here that kind of look like this. So, I think it would do great for, you know, panfish. But um, I'm not sure about trout. 
might do alright. This little caddis fly, I think. It's called uh, it's a stimulator. That elk hair on it, I think. This I think is gonna do really well as also, you know, matches a lot of uh, bugs in my area. So I expect, you know, some really good things from this. Everything I'm showing you has barbs as well. So uh, I guess I'll pinch barbs if I need to. And this is the Mad Hopper. And I think this is going to do really well for, you know, like smaller bass, possibly even trout. I'm not exactly sure if trout will go for like something that looks like a spider or cricket. Um, but I know this looks a lot like spiders in my area. So I think this is going to do awesome. I like the nice little case it gives you, but I'm not exactly sure why they gave me a little case for um, two, four flies all together, really. And this is the last one from the fly crate. I really like this one. I think it's going to do really well. It's called Swimming Frog Diver, uh, an orange and black. It's supposed to be weedless. That's why they got this little, uh, like, mono line right here. Fluorocarbon, whatever the hell it is. I think it's mono. Uh, but, yeah, I think this is going to do amazing when it comes to bass, especially with, you know, spawn coming up. Uh, and also, if I decide to try to use it on a snakehead, I uh, just pretty, I'm almost positive if I do use this on a snakehead, it's going to ruin it instantly. All right, and for the last one, uh, I did not get this one in the fly crate. I just forgot to show you. Um, I bought this one alone by itself, and I think it's going to do amazing. I got it from Cabela's, and it's called the Kickin' Minnow White and Gray and with a one-out hook. Look at this thing. I think this thing is going to do absolutely amazing. The more and more flies I get, the more and more I want to just make my own. I do not know how somebody would make this though. Obviously someone did and they did a really good job on it. Yeah, I think this is going to do amazing. Just look at this thing. It looks absolutely awesome. I think this is gonna catch a lot of fish. Hopefully it doesn't like, you know, break super easily. So I'll probably be right retying this on, you know, constantly. Yep, and that's all the flies. All right, so that's all for today. Um, yeah, I do, like I said, I do apologize for not uploading uh, the second video to that tournament I was fishing and also not uploading any other videos. Um, it's just tough during, you know, the winter time. Like we just recently had a snowstorm on Sunday and we're recent we're going to have another one tomorrow. But I do plan on, you know, bringing some constant some constant content to you. So please stay tuned. Stick with me. Uh let your friends know about me if you can. Uh share my content. I greatly appreciate that you know leave a like subscribe make sure you hit the notification bell so you're updated with all uh, videos and content I do put out and you can follow me over at Instagram at Joe underscore reels uh, to get you know a bit of a preview pictures of you know videos that are coming out all right so thank thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for some good content coming soon mm -hmm.